Blender 4.1. What if I told you guys that these only took seconds to make? Would you believe me? What if I told you there's a geometry node out there that creates stone that follows any curve, but more than that, it actually unwraps in real time. In other words, it adds on your textures as you're actually creating the stone. Stay tuned, guys. Welcome everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tudor, back today with another fantastic node, and this time we're looking at rock and stone geometry nodes. Now just a quick favour guys, if you've purchased any of our products or got our products for free, please leave us a review, especially on Udemy and especially on our geometry nodes, as this helps us grow much, much faster. Before we begin guys, a small disclaimer, the live UV will only work in Blender 4.1, so make sure that you're opening it up in Blender 4.1. If you're using earlier versions, the um, geometry node will work, it's just that live UV unwrapping, which needs 4.1. Now stay till the end, because near the end I'm going to show you just how amazing this node is, and all about the live UV unwrapping on top of there as well. So make sure you stay so that you understand how that will actually work and you can implement it into your own projects. So first of all, what I've done is I've set all of these up. You can see that every one of these has on a geometry node, as you can see, and even these parts also have geometry nodes on them. And now I'll show you just how easy this is to use. So first of all, let's start with the easy one. Let's start with this circle. So all I'm gonna do is press Shift A, bring in a circle, I'm gonna pull it out like so, and then all I'm gonna do is just move it over here. Next of all then, I'm just gonna come to Add, Geometry node, click the little down button, and the only one that will be in here is something called Stone Path. Click that on, and hey presto, there you go. Now what can we actually do with this geometry node, you might want to ask. But first of all, I'm just going to go through these options. So first of all, you've got a bevel where you can actually turn it down or up. You can also uh, set the subdivisions to make them more rounded if you want to. And we've also got a noise on there, which will really, really start to add that stone effect to these actual um, stones that we've got here. We can also turn up the effect with the noise scale and then turn up the power of these stones. Next of all, we've also made it so you've got the ability to rotate these stones if you actually want to. So you can see you get really, really nice effects straight off the bat. We've also added an auto smooth in as well so you can smooth your stones off as you're actually working and you'll see exactly how they're going to look. Now, before moving on to the generation, it's also important to know that you can come at any time and just reset any of these options along here by right clicking and just going down to reset to default value and that then will reset them. So I'm just going to change the noise back down and the power back down because it'll be easier to show you the rest of the actual node. And I'm also gonna set reset the rotation down like so. All right, the next thing we can do with this then is we can change the length. And what the length will do is it'll change how many stone blocks are within that curve. So you can see here, this is how it's actually working. And you can see now we've got bigger stones on there. We can also change the length randomness, which will mean that you end up with some smaller, some quite large stones. And again, you can still come in though and change it up or change it down if you want to, like so. Now let's put it on object mode so we can actually see what we're doing here. So now you've got a good view of what we're doing. Next of all, then we've got a width form where we can change the width of it on the fly. All of this is on the fly. And we can also come in and change the width randomness as well, if we so wish. Next of all, then we've got the thickness, which we can alter. And we've also got the thick randomness, which we can also alter. You can see just how quickly we can actually get really, really nice effects or realistic looking stone, depending on what we want. We can also change the gaps as well between each of these stones like so. And we can also change the gap randomness if we want to. Now the best thing is if we come in now and just press the tab button, we can also come in and actually change this. So you can see how I can even pull the handles around and change this as I want to, and then come in and still alter these parts if I want to. I can change the lens still if I want to. Everything can be changed on the fly, and you can see how that updates. Now you've seen how I've created this one. Um, let me show you now the actual pathway. So here I've got just a separate path that I've actually created and I want some stone going around here. So all I actually did with this is I just come in, Alt, Shift and Click, grabbing both of these sides then. And then all I'm going to do is just press Shift D, bring those up like so. And then all I'm going to do is separate them off. So P, Selection, separate them off. And now we've got our stone path and hopefully our soon to be stones. So what I'm going to do is come up to Object, Convert. And all I want to do is just convert this to a curve 
because this actual geometry node works on curves. It only works on curves, it won't actually work on mesh. Now let's go over to add modifier, geometry node, click little down button, bring in our stone path, and hey presto, there is your stone path. And you can see from here, of course, we can actually mess around with the length, we can bring that all the way up, we can mess around with the uh, thickness of this, we can mess around with the width and everything like that, and then we've got all of those randomizations in there at the same time. Now, the next thing I want to show you is, at the moment, you will see that this comes with an actual texture on. Um, it's already set to stone, as you can see here, but it's very, very easy to actually change this. Now, we've supplied you with eight different textures here, as you can see. For, they're all the same, but these ones are basically special textures. If I come over here, you will see that these are called wood, live, UV. And you can see that this one is stone, live, UV. And this basically means that these are the original um, textures and shaders. And these ones have been altered slightly, which I will show you in a minute. So if we come back now to our actual stone path, and all I'm going to do is come to back to my geometry node and change this to my actual wood. So you'll notice when I come in, I can actually change this now. And let's go to the wood, which is this one here. Now the thing is you'll notice at the moment that these are not unwrapped and that is because we've not set live UV unwrapping on at the moment. First of all, before showing you that part, what I want to show you is what you need to do to enable your live UV unwrap. So if I come over to um, this shader here and let's go into our shading panel, let's put it onto object and now you'll see this is what we have for this shader. Now if you go to the other shader, so if I come over here to our live shader, you will see that any shaders that you need to bring in, wherever all your textures come together and you've got a mapping and texture coordinates, all you need to do is add an attribute node and then basically set this name down here. So all I'm gonna to do to actually do that is I'm just gonna press Control C, I'll come to my original one and I'll just press Control V and drop that in there. And then all you need to do is just plug it in via the vector to this one here. So then you'll see that all of that is plugged in on any of the actual textures where they go into a texture coordinate node. And that is basically it. You're ready to rock and roll. So let's actually show you then how we actually use that then. So if I come over here now and come to this stone, you will see if I click on live UV, let's change this material then to the live UV one. Make sure you do that. And there you go. Hey, presto. Now what you'll see is as I actually bring the length of these down, you will see that it's actually changing in real time. Now the thing is with the wood, so wood in particular, you just need to be careful that you need to make it big enough so that it understands where the edges are of this UV. You can also see, I can turn down the gaps as well, and you'll see there, as long as I turn up the length, as you can see, now the UVs will be following the same. Now the thing is with stone, we haven't got that problem, it's just on the woods. When it's live unwrapping, it just needs a big enough area to actually live unwrap. Now the best thing is, as you can see, if I come into these now, grab both of these ends and press the E button and pull them out, you will now see that it's live unwrapping as we actually pull them out, like so. So everything on here is being unwrapped as we're pulling them out, and then all we need to do is just, create, you know, increase the length, and then you'll see now they all follow the same. This just saves you tons and tons of time, guys, making sure that you haven't got to go in when you finish these and actually unwrap them. Now, how do we actually change this uh, in from a geometry node then into a usable mesh where we can send it through to games engines and things like that? That's quite simple. You just come up to object, convert, and convert to mesh. And there you go. You've got your geometry nodes all done for you, already UV unwrapped. Now let's show you the other two ones then that I've actually created. So let's come to this column here. So all I'm gonna do is just simply bring in a curve. So I'm gonna bring in a path. I'm gonna rotate my path round on the X axis, so RX 90. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's just rotate that round again, so RX, there we go. Let's pull it over here. And then all I'm gonna do now is basically come in, add a geometry node, come down, add in my path, and there we go. Let's pull it out a little bit. So I'll just show you, we can pull it out like so. And then while you've actually got this geometry node, what you can also do on top of this geometry node is also modify stacking. So what I can also do is come in, add a deform, a simple um, deform like so. And you can see now we're actually twisting this on the fly. So I can twist this round and what's better, I can come back and still mess around with these. So I can still mess around with the length if I want to. I can still mess around with the noise if I want to as well. As you can see, all of this is done on the fly 
like so, making it incredibly easy to use within your own projects. The other thing, of course, we can come in and actually bend this as well. So let's pull it on the Z-axis and you can see now it's bent. And what's more, we can also alter it again on the fly. So we can change the gaps down if we want to and everything can be done in real time. Let's go to live UV unwrapping and you can see now everything is already unwrapped for you. Now, finally, the bridge then, the way that I did the bridge is I'll quickly show you how I do that now. So let's first of all bring in a plane. So I'm just gonna bring in a plane like so. I'm gonna press the S button and then I'm just gonna pull it out on the Y axis like so. From here, I'm just gonna press Control A, reset all of the uh, transforms, and then I'm gonna come in, add in a few edge loops, so Control R, left click, right click. And now what I wanna do is I just wanna extrude this out. So I'm gonna press A, E, extrude it out like so. Now let's just grab just this top bit. So all I'm gonna do is hide the rest of it away. So Shift H just to hide it all away. And then I'm gonna grab the center off here. I'm gonna make sure proportion editing is on. I'm going to press three to go into my side view. And then finally, all I'm going to do is bend it up to get that beautiful bridge shape. All right, I hid that now, which means that the bottom hasn't been affected. And we've just got that really, really nice shape. Now, I'm guessing you can understand um, how I'm going to do the rest of it. So I'll just show you one part of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Alt H. I'm going to grab all these, all these sides as well. And then all I'm going to do is press Shift D and bring those up without portion editing on. Then I'm going to press P, selection, separate those out. Come to these now. Let's reset all the transforms. So set origin to geometry. And then all we're going to do is convert it to curves like so. Add in a geometry node. So generate geometry node. Going to be our stone path. And there we go. That is how we actually create it. So let's now increase the width. Let's uh, bring the uh, length of these down. So something like this. Let's uh, increase the thickness. And there you go, you can see just how easy and quickly you're able to get that effect. The same is for this part in here, by the way. All I did was use a, a cylinder, I cut out this part, and then I just took this edge and created it into stone. These ones were done like I did the column. I just got a, you know, a long piece of uh, curve and basically just converted it to rock. So you can see just how easy it is to use so guys, that is our stone geometry node made here at 3D Tudor. And you can see because we make it for professionals, it's incredibly easy to use. It's highly versatile, which is really, really important to us because we want to use it in many, many projects. And better than that as well, it's very well optimized, meaning you shouldn't have any problems with it. Now, guys, before finishing, I'm just going to show you how to actually bring this then into your other projects because we get a lot of people asking this question. So I'll show you how to do that. So as you can see, all I'm going to do, I'll just grab this part here, press Control C, and then I'm just going to open up another project. So here is our other project. This is our Wizards Tower course, which is out now. You can get it via our Gumroad via pre-order, or if it's a little bit more in the future, you can probably get it right now. All right, and all I wanna do is just press Control V and actually bring that in. From there then, you will see that this has on now the actual geometry nodes, and in this other project now, I can press Shift A, bring in a, a Bezier curve. Let's just bring it up so I can show you. Here's my Bezier curve, let's make it a little bit bigger. Add modifier, geometry node, and let's come and bring in our stone path. And there you go. It's as simple as that to bring them into other projects. All right. So this will be, I think, our 20 second node or something like that. We're still aiming for 100 by the end of the year. So you've, if you've not subscribed, please do keep up to date with everything we're doing. Give us a like if you like this node. And if you want to get this for free, along with all of our geometry nodes, then please check out our Patreon, where we offer not only over 40 plus courses on Blender, on Unreal Engine, and everything in 3D, but also you can get your hands on every geometry node we've put out there for absolutely free. All right, everyone, so I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.